share your screen? Yes, give me one second. Uh, so first of all, hello. Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm just working on sharing my screen. One second. You should see it. Now. Can you see it? Someone confirm? Thumbs up, please. Yes, it's working. yes. OK, thanks a lot. So um, yeah, so for today we talk about uh, intermodal and PTB is quite well known for road transport planning and optimization also for other aspects and uh, uh, everything which is dealing with transport and mobility. So one special case is somewhat intermodal and intermodal uh, has become quite relevant uh, over the last decades and uh, there are a lot of containers moving around the globe. Um, I think you are well aware of uh, the major goods flows and uh, basically this was motivation to PTV to work in that field. Um, what we do is in the intermodal uh, sector, uh, we provide a component uh, for performing routing and uh, also planning uh, based on schedules. So what does that mean? Um, usually when you have uh, a vessel uh, like from uh, Shanghai to uh, Dubai and then further onwards to let's say Rotterdam, uh, there's a certain schedule behind like boarding is uh, at a certain date and then 10 days later uh, there's the uh, there's the port call number one and so on. So this is basically the core behind the routing. So what we do actually in the X intermodal is to uh, put together um, the uh, routing on the road network uh, and we enter a different uh, additional layer uh, which is timetable based uh, where you can enter at certain points so-called terminals. Um, this is the let's say forward uh, to the talk. Uh, we will uh, see let's say the overview as part of a PowerPoint presentation and then later on uh, we will switch to a demonstration system. Uh, if you have questions, I would ask you to uh, type these just in into the chat and I would prefer to answer these uh, right away during the presentation and not to collect everything and answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, OK, so. Next slide um, for us, uh, we uh, differentiate uh, two major uh, fields of use cases. One is operational and one is strategic. Uh, for the strategic uh, part uh, to start with, uh, we assume that uh, there's a um, hello. Um, I had some connection issues. I hope I'm back. Bernd, is it working again? Yes, I can hear and see you. Yes. OK, great. Thanks. Uh, basically, um, for the strategic part, uh, we identified uh, some um, some main main uh, action fields, uh, which is actually a strategic planning to identify alternatives to the uh, routes which are maybe today uh, trucked and are there intermodal alternatives which can be considered. Uh, we can uh, run a comparison for transport cost and duration and also for um, uh, environmental factors like carbon emissions uh, on these. So you can basically compare what a transport uh, from A to B uh, costs with a truck and uh, compare this against an intermodal alternative. Um, you can also uh, calculate this not only for one transport, but for let's say many transport orders and then compare. Um, further on, uh, in the strategic case, uh, you can run also some, let's say, network simulation and evaluation. So what does that mean in case uh, you change a existing provider, like an intermodal provider in Europe is quite well known Combiverkehr, 
uh, which is a uh, rail service uh, operator uh, for intermodal uh, transports of container units. And what happens if you switch that operator off? There are other operators in the market in Europe, uh, which also provide services maybe at the same corridor or at different corridors. And what are the alternatives uh, which arise when you switch off one operator? Or you can also think of uh, switching off one modal network. This is uh, possible as well. So there's not only rail network in Europe, uh, but there's maybe also a uh, short sea network or a inland navigation barge network. So there are different uh, possibilities to play with that. At the end of the day, uh, you plan uh, and you compare uh, before performing the transport. So this gives you quite a good idea of what is possible and uh, what a situation uh, could look like in the future if you uh, would switch to intermodal. Um, the other part uh, is, let's say, more the operational driven part. Uh, this is uh, uh, identifying three major cases. It's intermodal transport chain composition, intermodal planning and uh, support in case of disruptions. So for the chain transport uh, building, um, you can just uh, send the, uh, um, let's say, the, the transport uh, instruction from A to B to the X intermodal and receive an, a set of uh, transport alternatives. So road transport plus a number of intermodal alternatives. In the field of intermodal planning system, um, we go one step further. We look at a transport order level and we determine per transport order level uh, different options for this transport order to be uh, performed. And uh, we then uh, do this not only for one transport order, but for many. And uh, if you have, for instance, 1000 transport orders, uh, you can then uh, use this optimization approach by the X intermodal and determine the overall most cost efficient uh, solution uh, for your whole system. So basically it helps you to determine uh, the alternative uh, in the most cost effective way. Uh, Finally, uh, support in case of disruptions is a bit a uh, special case, but it is quite uh, common that something goes wrong. Uh, for instance, if you have a time critical uh, transport and uh, this is maybe stuck somewhere, uh, let's say uh, during the transport um, and um, you want to find an appropriate alternative, either switch to a different timetable based service like pick a more expensive bus, faster uh, train or uh, switch to, let's say, trucking in case this is needed to cover the transport order constraints. So this is the use cases we are thinking of uh, supplying with the uh, X intermodal. Um, to do so, um, we need some data and um, Data usually for the uh, X route case in the road sector uh, is basically a digital map and um, same goes with the X intermodal. We use a digital map, but also uh, we do use a, uh, an additional layer. What you see here in the top right corner is a uh, intermodal network for trains in Europe, but also going to Asia. This is one example just to visualize something. Um, basically, we distinguish between um, physical infrastructure and service uh, infrastructure. So services are, let's say, not physical, but they are uh, timetables. They can change over time. Uh, infrastructure as such can also maybe change, but it is not uh, too likely that this will change uh, daily. Right, so a terminal exists, it will be built, it takes some, some time to construct the terminal and to build some, let's say, uh, rail uh, infrastructures uh, and to connect these terminals. So they don't change too much. What we have is we have a uh, European uh, network, which is quite well covered uh, for uh, rail 
and uh, intermodal transport as such. So we don't only have rail networks, but we also have, let's say, uh, inland navigation and also short sea networks. We go also uh, one step uh, beyond uh, the European scope. Uh, we have also uh, at a global level data, especially for uh, deep sea shipping and air transport. Um, talking about intermodal data, I was uh, already introducing some elements of these. So basically you need a terminal uh, set, you need uh, physical uh, network, uh, um, digital twin. Uh, you need uh, to have some handling um, processes modeled, uh, some transshipment possibilities between uh, terminals. For instance, at the port level, there are not only one terminal, but many. Um, you need then uh, very important intermodal schedules. Uh, so the timetables which uh, describe going from A to B to C to D and uh, the service days and uh, the um, and the attributes around that. Uh, further to that, uh, you want to have uh, monetary costs and uh, emission uh, costs uh, in these schedules. And um, further on, you want to have maybe some restrictions. In some cases, it's uh, um, accompanied transport or it's uh, uh, unaccompanied transport, meaning that uh, the driver or the truck goes, the tractor goes uh, with the uh, trailer, for instance, on a boat uh, crossing the uh, crossing the river or the the sea. So, um, moving onwards. Um, I described that uh, we have a two-step approach, uh, basically. Uh, step one is the calculation of the intermodal route and the alternatives. And step two is the uh, planning approach uh, where we solve a multi-commodity network flow problem. Um, maybe you don't want to have both. Maybe you're just interested in the uh, intermodal routing part. Uh, so like the shortest pass, but uh, Please keep in mind that uh, we have methods implemented in the X intermodal, which allow you to uh, make use of this uh, solving approach. Um, so uh, going to step number one uh, to determine a uh, intermodal route from, uh, in this case, from Stuttgart to uh, somewhere in Sweden, Halmstad. Um, this is uh, giving you some idea of how the X intermodal is working. Um, you see here, uh, there's always a road alternative. This is like a, um, a comparison, a benchmark uh, against uh, what you can compare. Um, so if road is, let's say, uh, a cost of 1,600 euros, then intermodal is maybe cheaper. And this gives you, let's say, an indication of how um, much money you could save by switching to an intermodal alternative. Um, here, in this case, uh, we particularly go from Stuttgart to Ludwigshafen. Uh, so we truck to the terminal and from the terminal Ludwigshafen, uh, we go to the uh, uh, terminal in Lübeck. And from Lübeck, uh, we do some uh, some uh, C mode and go to Malmö. And then we arrive at our final uh, destination. There are also some other options. Um, like here you see there's a, uh, a blue alternative uh, besides the one uh, which is going here in, let's say, uh, in purple. Um, the X intermodal is geared towards providing you different alternatives, um, meaning these can be physically a different path, like here, uh, this uh, going via Essen, where my mouse pointer is currently per, uh, pointing at, uh, or like here, one via Hanover, like where my mouse pointer is currently pointing at. Um, this is uh, to give the, uh, let's say, the planner or the operator, decision maker, somehow support in uh, understanding there's a different option and um, not always the first option is the best. 
Uh, in some cases, it is. Uh, but in some cases, uh, it is uh, quite interesting for an intermodal planner to uh, understand that there is a different uh, option how he could transport. OK. Um, I will uh, go through some other quick example. Uh, here you see uh, from somewhere south uh, in Bavaria in Germany uh, going to Spain. Um, quite different uh, routing results uh, via one via Bordeaux and one via, let's say, Barcelona uh, and Lyon. And uh, this is uh, giving you, I think, a quite visual idea of how this is working. Um, as said, uh, main input to this to work is an intermodal timetable uh, basis, uh, which either comes from your existing system or uh, which is manually uh, provided via a, a visual uh, front end. I will talk about this in a minute. Um, you can also uh, look into uh, different uh, options uh, here, especially these European examples are quite visual. Um, I was uh, talking about uh, the functionality of planning and also optimization, and this optimization uh, is presented in this slide here. Um, here are some sample uh, transport orders. A transport order is defined by a pickup location and a delivery location. Uh, pickup and a latest pickup time and a earliest and last or latest uh, delivery time. So you have certain constraints with that transport order. And uh, what we provide here is functionality to calculate uh, within the call it thresholds of the transport order different transport alternatives. And um, in this case, uh, for this transport order called uh, Messe or Exhibition 6, uh, it's a demo uh, transport order, uh, we can calculate 19 transport alternatives, which are within the thresholds of the um, of the uh, transport order. This is going from uh, somewhere in Rotterdam to uh, I think somewhere in in Milan, so northern Italy. And um, so which of the 19 transport alternatives to decide for? Um, this gives you, let's say, the idea and the motivation. It's quite difficult for a planner then to walk through or to click through all of these 19 alternatives and to make a decision. Maybe it is, maybe it is not, uh, especially if you have, let's say, a uh, high quantity of transport orders you need to take care of. Uh, things become quite difficult also for a planner and because someone the capacity of the, let's say, best solutions because most cheap or fastest options are in some cases limited. So a train is at some point in time full, fully booked and uh, how to book this then later on. Uh, therefore, uh, we have got a, uh, an approach uh, which is then analyzing all these uh, transport alternatives uh, in means of costs and in means of uh, predefined capacity uh, for the lines. And uh, we do then an allocation. So this service here, from Cologne to Husto, so like from, from Germany to uh, Italy. Um, this service is now fully booked with uh, three of three capacities. There are other trains like from Duisburg, from a different terminal to Busto, to the same destination terminal, there's only one capacity out of 20. And um, this is uh, giving you hopefully a good idea of um, how this is working. So you get, let's say, planning and optimization functionality for intermodal uh, from the uh, component X intermodal. I can uh, demonstrate this also uh, uh, later in the session uh, when we look at the live system. Um, <clears throat> I was talking about data management. And uh, again, please, if you have questions, uh, Type them into the chat and uh, Bernd will read them out and uh, I try to answer them then right away. 
So if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, talking about uh, data management and uh, in particular master data. Um, I was referring to a standard uh, road network uh, digital maps. Uh, these are, let's say, updated in a certain frequency and uh, every now and then uh, there's an update and um, for intermodal uh, things are, let's say, more stable. And uh, you see here uh, visualizations of uh, in the dark blue uh, case, top right uh, of the screen, uh, there's a C network, uh, let's say a simplified deep sea network uh, with a uh, global coverage um, in the middle. Uh, this is a, let's say, light blue. Uh, this is a inland navigation barge network uh, for Europe. Um, and uh, the screen uh, was also uh, shared uh, at the beginning of the presentation, this green network is the intermodal uh, rail network uh, we currently uh, run. So it is one example. Uh, there are also other networks uh, or other rail networks which are more detailed, but uh, from our experience, uh, the one uh, we currently show here is the most appropriate to cover intermodal transport for containers. Um, how do we manage this data? Uh, we have, let's say, modeled these networks ourselves uh, and uh, we are able to share these. Uh, so these are built out of nodes and edges and each node has a location and each edge has a certain distance. So we have a, uh, a routable uh, digital network um, for the management of a uh, of these data, we have a support tool called the PTV Intermodal Data Manager. Um, in some cases, uh, you already may have uh, intermodal um, station data, like terminal data. In this case, this is Rotterdam ECT Delta Terminal at the uh, Mars Flakte. Uh, in Rotterdam, and here you see, let's say, the detailing in this case of the port of Rotterdam, uh, which is quite uh, quite uh, detailed in this case, uh, and the uh, Rotterdam uh, terminal uh, ECT Delta is um, is connected to um, to deep sea network, to barge network, to a deep sea network, and also to a rail network. Um, the screenshot here below uh, shows a different terminal in Rotterdam just to present you the, let's say, the density of terminals at a certain port. And the port of Rotterdam is, is for Europeans, uh, one of the most important ports. There are other ports uh, where you have also many terminals in the port uh, area. And um, uh, therefore, in some cases, you may want to have a transshipment between terminals, like you want to transport from the dedicated uh, C terminal to the dedicated, let's say, rail terminal, because uh, there is the service not going directly uh, with the uh, with the hinter or within the hinterland transport from the C terminal uh, to uh, the uh, hinterland terminal, but there needs to be a rail terminal at the uh, port site. Uh, in between the transport and therefore we have the possibility of uh, transshipping between terminals at a uh, defined level. So um, this is quite complex. I tend to uh, not go into further uh, detail here. If you have questions on these, uh, you can contact uh, me after uh, the session. Um, so. Um, Going a bit uh, further uh, in regards to data management, um, we have got here one example uh, for an intermodal timetable. And um, timetable is uh, basically defined by a, an identifier, uh, which is basically unique. Uh, we have then a description, like a long name. Uh, we have got here the uh, modal network, which this uh, timetable is active on. Uh, we have a flag, whether it is roll on, roll off, meaning uh, uh, 
uh, the truck and the tractor and also the, the trucker uh, goes on the train or on the ship, on the ship, um, or not. In this case, it is not flagged, so this is uh, not active. This uh, this property here, and uh, this means that basically this service allows only boxes to go alone. And um, as you may uh, think, uh, there's one day of the week, in this case Friday, when the service is going. And uh, there can be a validity for the timetable. This is basically unlimited in this case. And finally, there's the operator. Uh, in this case, it is TX Logistics. Uh, it's an intermodal uh, rail operator in Europe. Uh, it could be for C, it could be Maersk, or it could be uh, some other operator. Uh, there are many examples uh, you can think of maybe. Um, basically, this is helpful to uh, uh, perform inside the routing case uh, selection of operators which you want to allow and which you don't want to, to see. Uh, I can demonstrate this in a bit. Um, going a bit onwards, um, in this case we go from uh, sequence one to sequence two, like from the terminal in Herne here, and then we go way south to Italy, uh, to uh, Verona, and uh, we have a certain closing time, and uh, we have a departure time. In many cases, the departure time uh, is not important, uh, whereas the closing time is, because if you are at the gate but uh, did not pass the gate because you are stuck in the congestion or whatever happens, uh, you will miss the cutting time, and then you have to uh, replan uh, your trip, um, then you basically missed your service and you need to go at a different, uh, so, or with a different service at a different day, which is maybe uh, causing some uh, issues then for you or for your for your user of the service. Um, the arrival uh, terminal is here, Verona, and uh, the service arrives at five o'clock and there's the assumption that this is also then ready for pickup at the terminal at five o'clock. It could be also the day after, it could be also uh, the same day, uh, day three, uh, but not at five o'clock, but at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon, could be. Um, what is interesting here is uh, that you see a distance. This is derived from the digital network routing pass. Uh, so this is uh, the intermodal distance uh, using the rail network uh, from uh, from terminal A to terminal B. Um, we could also insert here additional stops. Uh, we could go further onwards to, let's say, Rome uh, and uh, allow also in Verona to load in Verona and not only to unload in Verona, going then to, um, to Rome, for instance. Um, here, this is also something I want to point your attention at is cost. Um, these are monetary costs. Uh, we did just for this example, uh, one kilometer costs one uh, euro. It could be 50 cent or whatever. Uh, you can put in this, let's say, formula and play with that. Uh, but just for the sake of simplicity, we decided for this example to go with one euro. Um, okay. Um, if you put in a different stop, uh, then there would be costs from one to stop number two, and there could be also costs from one to stop number three, and also costs from stop two to stop three. And these do not have to be always, let's say, linear, like one kilometer is one euro, but you can uh, put like something, um, a flat rate, like from uh, Germany to Italy, it's always 500, uh, and uh, from Italy to uh, to uh, Greece, it's 800, and then from Germany to Greece, it's uh, 1,000. You can play with this. It's depending on your existing contracts. If you have uh, contracts in place, uh, if not, then you can uh, take this, uh, let's say, uh, um, cost calculation as uh, input 
uh, parameter to your assumption. Okay, um, let's move on a bit more. Um, what is uh, the X intermodal technically looking like and where it can be used? Um, basically, the intermodal uh, component is based on X server one uh, technology. It's the currently the latest version X, the 1.34.04. Uh, um, it's yeah, the most or the la latest version uh, we currently deployed. Uh, it comes with the uh, um, look and feel of the X server one uh, component. Um, so uh, you can have here a, let's say, a raw request runner. Uh, you can uh, play with the management console. Uh, we can have a look at it later. Where can it be used? Uh, basically, uh, it's one server similar to an X route or X tour or X map. And these can be used in a TMS environment or in an ERP environment. Uh, so this is, let's say, an integration component. I would uh, make one quick uh, stop here and ask to the round, are there any questions so far? Uh, Florian, no questions in the chat so far, but I, I'm not getting tired to, to motivate you. If you have questions, use the chat. Give us some feedback, use the, the audio <coughs> in channel. Um, so far, I'm just summing up some of your statements in the chat, but no questions have been mentioned so far. Just go on. OK, great. Uh, so please feel free, uh, especially now in the uh, following parts uh, where we um, uh, will look a bit into the demo system. I will just uh, change my screen to the um, Demo system here. Uh, I want to start first of all with the uh, with the data manager. Uh, as said, the data manager gives you a uh, possibility to uh, manage uh, networks and also schedules. Um, and uh, maybe we start uh, from scratch. Um, so we start with the terminals. Uh, there's a uh, certain uh, terminal uh, set here included currently. Let's say I want to see 200 terminals. I can uh, just scroll down a little bit and you see that there's uh, quite some coverage uh, globally. We ha have currently around uh, 1,800 uh, terminals uh, available. Um, it depends a bit into in which area you want to look at. Uh, we have basically at a global level, we have mainly uh, C terminals, uh, so ports and terminals, and also we have airports. And um, uh, depends on the use case you're interested in, uh, we can have a bit more detailed look into these uh, at a later point in time. You can uh, send to the chat, maybe please uh, show me something in the US I don't know, in Asia, uh, whatever you are interested, we can play a little bit with it. Um, and uh, my favorite example is here the port of Ravenna, Italy. Um, Ravenna is uh, close to the sea. Uh, and um, it is uh, described by an identifier. And there's a name, port of Ravenna. Uh, there's a uh, description um, for it. It can be test one, two, three. I can just put it in as plain text, but uh, it's sometimes helpful to get an idea of what the terminal uh, is looking like, especially if you have a terminal number like terminal uh, 24. Uh, what is terminal 24? Well, this is the terminal at the port of Ravenna, which is linked to, uh, let's say, rail, for instance. Could be. Um, so here are the modes which are currently connected to rail, uh, to short sea and to deep sea. And I will uh, uh, show this uh, um, how, how we can easily edit it. Um, I will just uh, disable the uh, the network for short C and the flag disappeared. And I will uh, say search for um, 
or terminal uh, uh, properties which allow um, uh, short C and I find a network which is short C vessel Ravenna. There's a node which we can use to link. We can do this also for the dark blue, for the DSV, for the deep sea vessel, uh, and we connect this also. And now the uh, terminal is connected to the digital network layer of the, uh, let's say, routing infrastructure. Um, there's a certain address. This is maybe not something new. Uh, it's country, it's postcode, it's city street, and there's also latitude, longitude. We could uh, geocode it. Um, and uh, something which is maybe interesting for some of you is that there's a possibility to uh, put in some opening hours. Um, usually um, these are not so important, but uh, in some cases it is of interest. Okay, so this was the example for the terminal. Um, let's go next to the uh, to the network level, and uh, I will open up my um, network uh, for rail uh, in this case. Um, and uh, you see here these are uh, built upon nodes and edges, and we can also visualize these. OK, um, let's go to somewhere. Maybe. Maybe here to the Netherlands. Um, and. Um, we can uh, maybe play a bit with that. Um, we can add it here as a network if needed. Uh, so here can let's say visualize uh, terminals and uh, and nodes and I can put also some point in between and uh, and store this point I will delete it of course later on I think I don't have the correct right for it, uh, but basically um, I can maybe delete just one point. I will delete this one. Delete the node and then uh, this connection here in between disappeared, right? So and I can just. Uh, provide this connection again to the system. And there it is, and this is basically the way how you uh, model your network at an, let's say, easy level. In some cases, it is quite detailed, as said. In some cases, it is, let's say, a uh, uh, wider range. I will um, show you. I will show you here one example for uh, for the Silk Road. Uh, oh, I need to zoom in. Sorry. Here, this is. Uh, very large distance. It is, uh, let's say, aggregated uh, in between, as you see, between the intermediate uh, points. Um, but uh, it is uh, giving you at one point in time some uh, some good indication about the distance uh, you need to travel. And at the other side, uh, you can uh, have a graphical polyline uh, as part of the routing result. OK. Um, one point I wanted to uh, show you is also um, the schedules. And uh, I want to pick two examples here. One is, let's say, in this case, uh, the one I was showing in the presentation. Uh, this is. Uh, the uh, timetable in our data manager for it, um, but I want to show you also something different. I want to um, switch quickly to a different mode and uh, show you something with a larger scale. So this is a uh, an example I typed in this morning uh, to prepare something for you, and uh, this is going now from 
uh, from Shanghai to, uh, in this case, uh, Hamburg. Um, and we have not only one stop, but we have four stops. Um, so this is going from Shanghai uh, via the Strait of Malacca uh, to uh, Navasheva, uh, so uh, Mumbai. And uh, then further onwards via the, uh, via the channel uh, to uh, Valencia in Spain. And uh, then further onwards to Port of Hamburg. Okay. And uh, you see here there are, let's say, different uh, closing and uh, arrival times. So this journey takes from Shanghai to Navasheva 15 days. And in Valencia, you arrive at day number 25. And in Hamburg, you arrive at day 32. And you can only load in Shanghai in this example and, uh, and unload at Navasheva in Valencia and in Hamburg. Maybe uh, you would want to. Uh, allow loading also here in Valencia or in Navasheva. And uh, okay, we can just store this and now loading would be possible in Shanghai and in in uh, in India. Um, okay, um, here this polyline uh, gives you again the distance for the uh, sea transport um, of this specific route. And uh, here you can have costs uh, like uh, it is from from China to India. It is uh, 1000 euros. Of course, not these days. This is way more expensive. But from one to uh, to from Shanghai to Spain is like 9000 euros, maybe. And from um, from Shanghai to Hamburg, it's it's 10000 euros. Maybe there could be also something like from Valencia, uh, or sorry, from from India, from Navasheva to uh, to Hamburg, could be five thousand euros. We could put in something like that, and then we store it, and then we can uh, use this in our intermodal uh, routing service. Okay. I was talking a lot about this data. Um, I will leave out transshipment centers, how to model these. This is a bit more complex. Um, I think I want to put your main attention uh, towards uh, routing. Um, and um, before going, oh, timed out. Before going to them, um, I will, um, I will switch uh, the, uh, screen to the demo system where we can uh, have some some quick routes. Uh, let's say we want maybe to go from um, from Düsseldorf. I will not. Uh, so, so, yeah, let me let me yes. just ask, uh, or forward one question from from our colleague Thomas. Yes. <coughs> Thomas, it's yours. It's about data, I think. Yeah. Hi, Florian. <coughs> hi. Really cool pr presentation. Just one question regarding the data. I mean, those timetables. Is it a, a customer or partner, uh, let's say, obligation uh, or the uh, to provide the whole data? Or if uh, we as a PTV, uh, we do provide some uh, basic timetables, for instance? Yes, last case. We can provide some basic timetables. Uh, the customer could or the user could provide own timetables. Um, but please be aware that uh, this is, uh, let's say, uh, taking some quality then, right? So if it is inside a TMS system uh, already in place, then we can uh, use this data, we can import it, we can integrate it into the network, which takes some, let's say, limited effort to do so. But on the other side, um, if there are timetables and uh, existing cost conditions, uh, these are, let's say, usable and can be, let's say, used within the X intermodal. There's a, um, a possibility to import timetables, for instance, at a uh, CSV file level, but there's also a web service to import these just or to push these from an existing system into the server component. I hope okay. this answers your question. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thanks. OK, um, let's let's stick to this example. Um, we have like like 15 minutes left. Uh, let's go from Düsseldorf to 
uh, to Bratislava. Um, yeah. And calculate some route. And you see here, you get some different alternatives. Yeah, either go from uh, from Düsseldorf or to truck from Düsseldorf to Neuss. I will zoom in here. Uh, so here's noise. And uh, then go from noise to Vienna. And then truck to Bratislava uh, with uh, Bell Cargo Austria with a service provider here in this case, uh, or go from uh, Düsseldorf to uh, Vienna. So from Düsseldorf terminal to Vienna terminal uh, and uh, just with different operators. Um, I have put in into the request a departure time, uh, basically uh, the 7th of February at 10 o'clock. Uh, if I put in a different uh, time, time like uh, Friday or so, uh, it is likely that the result would uh, provide some different uh, alternatives. Um, I want to give you an insight into the um, properties which we can set. Uh, we can uh, say either it is uh, accompanied or unaccompanied, so like uh, ferry or rolling the Landstrasse, when the trucker is going uh, with, the, with the truck uh, onto the service, or in this case it's unaccompanied, so the box is going alone. Uh, we can have a certain cost limit for what we are uh, willing to uh, pay. Uh, there's a time cost ratio, like for which cases uh, results shall be presented. So this is, let's say, uh, currently switched to 40% uh, time and 60% uh, cost. Um, there's a distance uh, we allow to pre or end haul uh, um, to the terminal. And there are different modes which we can uh, allow or disallow, and we can just say uh, this K line we don't allow. Uh, I will not play with it uh, right now. Uh, no, uh, I want to show some different uh, different option, and I want to uh, delete here this, and I want to go from Prague to London. Um, this is a quite nice example. I need to zoom out and to, to zoom in. Let's say go from here because this is uh, crossing the channel and somewhere in London. And okay. So either you go via, uh, let's say, from Prague to Hamburg, and from Hamburg you take a boat to Tilbury, or uh, you uh, go to Lovisic, uh, and then to Hamburg, and then again to Tilbury. Um, when we... Um, When we play with that, uh, we could also put in, let's say, from um, from from somewhere else. I want to uh, showcase uh, one ferry. Maybe we we go closer. We go to Liège, Lüttich, and start here and go to London. Let's say, give us some results, please. Okay, I need to switch on the component, I think. I make a different example. I was I was playing with the data in the morning. Maybe I have just deleted something. I will go from uh, from Trieste or from Salerno to Piraeus. So Salerno is
actually Okay, and go to Greece to Athens and this is basically what you get without uh, the intermodal, right? And um, when I um, allow now uh, the let's say the timetable uh, I should get one alternative now uh, which is oh more which is using now the the C transport right so this here is the let's say standard X route result and this is the timetable based uh, results this is with Grimaldi line in this case um, there are a couple of other examples I could demonstrate um, but I will uh, stop here and uh, if you have questions uh, as said, uh, please send them to the chat. Uh, Bernd is to read them out. Uh, I want to uh, go back to the um, to my uh, other machine and show you uh, quickly the raw request runner, how things uh, look like uh, when um, when uh, when playing with that. So basically uh, what I was showcasing here was using a graphical user interface, right? I think I've forgotten to mention that one. Um, but uh, the component as such is an X server component and we have integrated this into one of our um, um, route planning products. And this was what I was showing just before. Uh, sorry for uh, putting this last, but uh, I think uh, I wanted to mention it. So as said, this is, let's say, the uh, management console. It's the current version. Uh, we can um, play with the raw request runner. We can uh, send here some uh, some uh, some requests uh, using the options like when to start, what is the max cost, it's a component or not, uh, what's the time, time cost uh, ratio, the number of alternatives, of intermodal alternatives we want to receive, uh, uh, whether we want a waitlist or not, uh, um, and whether we want to exclude, for instance, an operator or a terminal or a transport mode, and then we get uh, this uh, lovely, uh, result back, uh, which you can then interpret. Uh, so here, option or altern route number two is rail with barge, and uh, you can just uh, uh, go through these then. Um, there's a documentation. Um, this is uh, showing here uh, in the API uh, documentation for X intermodal. There's a component uh, with the diagrams and the Let's say the descriptions of the methods. Um, so far for now, um, we have five minutes left. Are there any questions? So there, are, at the moment, there are no questions in the chat. And um, well, as I said, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, there is, it, it's quite silent. I, I don't know why. So um, hopefully. <laughs> we have just shown you everything that you wanted to know, but can we get some give some feedback from you? What what is your expectation towards the the component? Have you seen exactly what you need, or uh, do you have any questions? <clears throat> yeah, uh, I've tried you, to give you can a. Also raise your, you can also raise your hand, and then I can unmute you if needed. But I think you should mm -hmm. be able to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, I've tried to give a let's say an overview <laughs> of each and everything, uh, not diving too deep. Uh, I hope this was, let's say, giving the audience some kind of idea. Uh, if there's interest to play with it, 
uh, we can uh, provide access to a, to a test uh, environment. Uh, we can also discuss a bit about uh, data and uh, availability of data uh, as, let's say, uh, provision along with the X intermodal. Uh, this is what we can also discuss later on, uh, not in the large group. Uh, at a bilateral level, this is also possible. Let me just share my screen. I made some some notes in the the PowerPoint slides, which we will also provide to you afterwards. So, uh, use the time. Come back with your questions. Uh, if needed, come back to me afterwards. So, from from my perspective, most important key points are that this is an X Server One based project approach which is not available in PTV X server internet. So I know some of you are already dealing with our standard clouds with X server one, X server two. Um, what we've seen in, in the examples is that this is all working both with a European map. It can also deal with an intercontinental map if needed. And if you compare it, which is quite obvious, if you compare it to a standard X route server, there is a real difference. In X route server, you want to have one route and you need to get uh, many, many uh, information uh, elements from, from this route, like the, the polygon line, the emission calculation, and uh, the toll, for example. And in X intermodal, the focus is more on give me a set of alternatives. At least that's my understanding. Correct me if I'm wrong, Floria. Uh, you want a set of optional approaches of, of alternatives, how to get from one station to another station, for example. And <coughs> of course, you can also apply some filters. You have mentioned you can filter to the to, to the um, um, which means of transport you want to support or which ferry providers you want to uh, uh, filter from from the routing results and so on. That's that's a, a bit different in, in, in the usage and handling of it. Mm. What is also quite important from my perspective is that uh, with X route you have a standard set of data. You have the, the map data from PDB, the road network, and let's say the, the, the ferry teleporters, which just give you information about there is a connection from one port to another port, and it takes you some specific amount of time, but you don't know that there is in X route there is no link to timetable. So when the routing engine um, appears at a port, it just takes the connection to the other part of the teleporter. That's it. In its intermodal, you have the, the flexibility with the timetables, uh, daytime dependent and so on. <laughs> it's a very big thing. Uh, Tomas has already asked for the who is responsible for the data. Of course, we can provide a, let's say, a basic set of timetables, but in the end, you are responsible to maintain the data to add further timetables and schedules to the data of the X intermodal. You can use the, the API of X intermodal or we can also offer the data manager as an IIS application um, if needed. Um, so that that are the key points from my perspective. Anything to be added from from your side as a in, in part of the summary, Floria? No, I think uh, we gave a good overview uh, for the technical uh, part. Uh, uh, some further deep dive would be needed. If uh, there's interest, uh, we can do this uh, at a, an individual level. Um, so therefore, I think we can uh, close here at this point. OK, so I've just a, a quick summary also of about some, some standard resources like the link to the X intermodal sub forum. Uh, showcases will be available soon. Um, we have the recording of the video in, of the German version, which we, uh, took place three weeks ago, is already available on YouTube. I will put this video on YouTube as well in a few days. If you want to have a test version, just get back to me or to Florian and we can provide it. Uh, this should be done in a, in a close contact. It's not just a regular X server setup. As you know, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, not rock and science, but a bit more than for a standard X server. <clears throat> and just one more comment about webinars in, in general. I want to have a webinar about time dependency, especially in the context of tour optimization. So those of you who are using PTB's X Tour 2, uh, just get back to me. This is probably taking place in beginning of March. 
and I will just show you how you can create a multi-travel distance matrix and how you can consider the time of the well, uh, the availability times of the of the the resources in in this context, considering the multi-travel DEMA, which is an, a, a feature we invented in X Server Two. Well, that's it from my side, Florian. Last uh, statements from your side or from the uh, last chance for the audience. Otherwise, I will just close the recording and say thank you very much for joining. Feel free to come back to us later if you have any questions or feedback about today's session. And also very big thanks to Florian for the presentation. It's a very mighty interface and I'm quite interested in what we will see in the future in this interface. <clears throat> OK, so much. Gloria? Yeah, thanks for having me. Have all a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.